Right, hello guys, and I'm back with part B of the, um, the DIY analog synthesizer SEM VCA clone circuit. Now, again, just to kind of recap what I went through on the last video. So basically, I showed you how to use a LM13700, which is a dual operational transconductum amplifier in replacement of the CA308 which was reused in the original Oberheim SEM module which is, which is quite hard to get a hold of apparently but anyway this is more readily available and you're more likely to get exactly what it is so there we have it quite a very very basic schematic as we can see down here we have our control the envelope in and this is where we add all our other sort of our summing, summing node for our other incoming control voltages, LFO, etc. And we have the audio in, we have, uh, I think they call this AC coupling, so we don't get, we block DC with this electrolytic polarized capacitor, 100km for the audio, and then we have our trimmer here, which um, is our voltage, DC voltage offset. So say for instance, when you trigger the envelope generator, you can get a bump coming through a voltage, and what we do is we null that out by kind of centering that, I think we'll probably get about half voltage there, so we kind of null that out to about seven and a half volts ish if that sort of works out as a voltage divider. Don't know, somebody correct me on that if possible. And there we have it. So, what I'd first do, if I was you guys, is probably do yourself one of these. So, as you can see here, I have myself a little cheat sheet for the CA3080. And what I did was because I kept on hunting high and low for schematics on the internet this one for LM13700 version of the Oberheim um, voltage controlled amplifier, the Oberheim SEM voltage controlled amplifier, I couldn't find one so I basically sort of thought to myself right try and match it pin for pin. Now I have a cheat sheet as well which is covers the LM1300 and as you can see this is a dual, dual OTA as we see there, kind of looks like a, a, a normal op amp. So, but if we look at this one on the LM13700, we have these two transistors kind of wired in a, I think they call it a Darlington pair or something like that. Not quite 100% clear on that one. And we can see how that's wired up. So basically, what we're concerned with is one side of this LM13700. So we're going to use pins one, not pin two, pins three, four. And five is our output, which goes to our op amp. Now, if we go back, or if I quickly take you through our uh, bill of materials, you can see it's very, very minimal bits we need for this. So obviously we need the dual OTA, and we're going to need the we're going to need two 220 R resistors, 100K resistor, which I'll put a question mark on that. Reason why that being is because. One of these, if this is the one which sets our gain in the negative feedback loop, we can actually increase this. I've taken mine up to 470 to see how high I could push the output before it sort of got a bit too noisy and too, um, the, we had too much distortion, which was unusable. Um, one PMP transistor, anything like a general purpose, say the 2N3906 or a BC. Five, five, eight, etc. Again, when you come to using transistors, please try and observe polarity. They are not all polarized the same way. General rule of thumb: most, if not every single modern one, that will have a middle pin as the base. It's where the emitter and where the collector is, which is, can kind of mess you up and throw you off a bit. So the three three nine zero six is pretty much goes. We just think of it as I don't know. Find find the sort of um, an acronym rhyme for yourself for that one. Um, so as we can see, emitter. Um, we need to observe PMP. We have the emitter pointing in towards the base. If it was NPN, the arrow would be pointing the other way. And we're going to need one mega ohm resistor and twenty two to 47k resistor for the CV in. Now why I say that is basically when I started, when I first built this um, circuit I pretty much followed the whole schematic as the Oberheim SEM was values as to a T. Um, and I kind of thought to myself, hmm, what would happen if? So I changed the 47k resistor 
to a 22k resistor and it gave me a louder amplitude believe it or not so that's worth toying about with I won't go too low but to see how far you can take it to get the, the, the highest amplitude you can usable amplitude um, and also you're going to need a single or dual op amp you can go for a single op amp like a LM741 or there's quite a few other electronics um, manufacturers who manufacture the 741 chip the old one was the UA741 which was used in the original Oberheim you can go for a dual I meant for a dual for the sake of um, putting this on a breadboard and being able to use the um, unused op amp for the same space as you to use a single they're both 8 pin um, dual in line in the integrated circuits um, so yeah you could use the other side of the op amp for something else later so kind of plan it out in your head how you want to sort of do it and we're going to have a you can either use a 1 to 47 uh, UF cap input from the VCF um, mixer which does the DC block which is they call it DC, um, AC coupling so basically you dock block the DC coming in with the capacitor and won't let any DC signal through so you'll just get your audio signal coming through um, I'm not sure if I mentioned the 100k trimmer yeah, you're going to need a 100k trimmer which as you can see is let's just that focus in which is there which is there and also you're going to need yeah a some connection wire and a bag of perseverance most importantly very frustrating when circuits don't work and you're kind of on the bridge, um, verge of giving up so definitely a help for me and here we have an optional component here which is a non-polarized non capacitor which we can put in on the output stage of the audio in our gain stage in case we have, we're experiencing too much noise we can put something very small value in there say we're talking in the pico farads I wouldn't go anything over sort of say we can go something like between 22 between 22 and say 100 non polarized which will look like so ceramic don't care what it is you can put in pretty much any kind of type of but just observe on the scope if you have a scope just observe the output and what you may, you may notice is you may trim out a little bit of the higher frequencies on your wave shapes but not always a bad thing gives it its own unique character I mean any saw can sound like a saw a square or a triangle sometimes yeah but like I said that helps take out sometimes you get a lot of noise or power supply noise or hits very high frequency that helps remove it and there yeah, as we can see so if we go over to the breadboard we can just see the basic components there we have our LM13700 which is a 16 pin dual in line uh, package and a dual op amp here which is a 8 pin dual in line package and a trimmer which does our CV our offset our DC offset and that is pretty much it to be honest with you there's not a lot to this circuit we just need to observe the like I said make sure you get yourself a, a data sheet of uh, the ICs that you're using you can't really go wrong at all it really has, it does help me out big time um, yeah and like I said just get yourself a selection of electrolytic capacitors don't necessarily go for the values that I've said as far as this is concerned do your own thing with this this is what I say make your own you know yeah improve on what's already there or we'll make it worse if you like the options are pretty endless with that and that is like I said there is, isn't much to it so all we do is we send in the envelope generator into the CV point through the um, uh, through the transistor which is here as we can see that transistor there which goes into pin 1 of our OTA and then our output comes from 5 our audio output comes out from 5 and we take that into the inverting input which is pin 2 of our op amp and then we take the output and we drive that into a potentiometer so I'm going to just move some bits out of the way before I cause an accident and so what we have so if we put our our potentiometer and we'll take the audio in do this one-handed so we'll take the audio in to the middle 
of the potentiometer which comes out from the output which will be pin 1 and what I've done here is this, this all the brown cables here I kind of color code things where I have normally plus voltage I'll have orange and I'll have blue minus voltage kind of electrically makes me think of negative positive etc and we have brown or green I normally put as the ground so what we do we take one pin from the potentiometer which is our volume potentiometer and this is where we're going to probe our output to our interface whatever our speakers so we'll take one to ground the reason why that is so we turn the volume up this way and we're at full volume once we start to back this way we'll go to dead silence we'll go to zero volts ground nothing if you find you get any problems I had an experience where one almost actually caught fire don't know why that was probably did something else wrong maybe maybe an idea to put a very very small resistor in there to ground say something in the ohms range to so say something like a hundred start with a hundred ohms and see how far you can take the volume down because you might experience a little bit of or crackle or a bit of hum or something but yeah another thing give it a, give it a go another little tip I just wanted to share with you as well anyone who's familiar with these uh, breadboards is whenever I do my circuits if you if you observe here we have black and the red so people kind of normally assume this is for positive and negative which I suppose it is or plus voltage minus voltage or even ground one tip I would say if you're doing a project similar to mine is try and keep your power rails as isolated as possible so as you can see so rather putting all my negatives up here and all my um, positives down there I've taken them to two extremes and I'll tell you the reason for that um, quite a while back around the time when I first started I was getting problems when I was getting short circuit and nothing and it took me a long time to work out what was going on and what I found was progressively there was some kind of bleed over so we're getting short circuit and that can that cause a couple of batteries to sort of heat up and yeah sort of call my attention on that so what I do is I'll try and keep all my sort of power even my grounds I put them in the corner if you need some extra ground pins just do a little jumper over so you've got five and well, as a standard you have one two three four five six pins take a little jumper over give yourself another row there you go depending on the schematic your circuit your your um your building and yeah and that's it guys so yeah leave a leave comments in the uh, comment section obviously and any questions that you have and if anyone can come up with any suggestions of improving this circuit or any other any 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 kind of suggestions they will real will be uh, appreciated and yeah I will catch you guys next time and what I plan to do is try and compile all my schematics and put them up somewhere so you can all have a free download and look through them and like I said make it your own and uh, yeah enjoy alright take care guys